CNBC did a positive fawning segment on the increase in billionaire net worth under COVID. Watch this. Year for IPOs is turning into a banner year for newly minted American billionaires. Robert Frank joins us now with more. Um, I'm celebrating, Robert. I'm not one of them, but I'm just on the record. I'm not Bernie Sanders. I'm, I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that there's taxes, there's philanthropy, there's the possibility it can happen to other people if you work hard and have a great idea. I like millionaires and I like billionaires, but uh, you go ahead. I'm not going to comment on this. I have, I have no editorial opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, th these stories are just really inspirational, no matter what your point of view. You've got this week two IPOs, six billionaires, over $40 billion in personal wealth. You look at DoorDash, they minted three new multi-billionaires this week. CEO Tony Hsu, he's now worth over $2.7 billion. You've got co-founders Andy Fang and Stanley Tang. They were all friends at Stanford, and they did the first coding and food delivering while working at night while they were students at school. Those two guys worth two and a half billion dollars. Now, the winner of the week was Brian Chesky. He, of course, Airbnb CEO. And he's one of three co-founders who started the company when they were flat broke, sitting in a San Francisco apartment. They decided to rent out air mattresses to make the rent. Chesky, now worth over $11 billion. He also got a share grant this fall, valued at $1.8 billion, so that's on top of that. And he and the other guys cashed out about $90 million in stock yesterday. Now, co-founders Joe Gebbia and Nathan Blacharzik, they are now worth over $10 billion, also cashing out some of those shares. Now, in total, American billionaires have gained a trillion dollars in wealth just this year. Joe? This is just a perfect CNBC clip. It's everything that's terrible about CNBC in one clip. So the main problem here is they clearly believe in the myth of meritocracy. That's how they're talking. They're talking like, who, me? I'm not like Bernie Sanders. I don't want to punish success. I want to reward success. I think this is wonderful that we have more millionaires and more billionaires now. The idea that the reason why these people are getting wealthy is because they just worked harder than everybody else. That's provably not true. That's clearly not the case. I've said this before, but some of the hardest working people I've ever known were working like two or three low wage jobs. All of their waking moments were spent working and they still never made enough money to have a decent, comfortable life. So the idea of the harder you work, the further you go... That's not accurate. And, like, I would be sympathetic to people if they defend the hierarchy of a meritocracy if it's an actual meritocracy. But we don't have a meritocracy, so stop pretending like we do. And then the other thing is they sincerely believe, oh, you know, somebody's wealth doesn't make anybody else poor. But that's not really true either. The idea that, like, Oh, just because this person's got like $10 billion doesn't mean that this person who's living on less than minimum wage is impacted by this person having $10 billion. And it's like, of course, there's a finite amount of money and wealth. And this is, we need redistributive policies to ameliorate the extreme inequality brought about as a result of either a laissez faire capitalist system or, in our case, a corporatist system. So, yeah, of course, of course, the redistributive policies are absolutely necessary because. The, the inequality, the wealth inequality and income inequality can get so extreme that, of course, you look at it and you go, well, we should tax that guy and redistribute it and help these people and do it in the form of education, do it in the form of health care, in infrastructure, uh, you know, paid vacation time. Like, of course, redistribution is necessary and important and can help ameliorate the, you know, extreme inequality. So the idea of, like, that person's $10 billion has no reflection on the fact that this person's a working poor person. I mean, honestly, it's stupid if, if you believe that. I think the people who believe that are, like, disregarding all evidence. Now, just to give you, you know, a better sense here as to the place we're currently in, an estimated 41.4% of the total U.S. population, 135 million people, 
are either poor or low income. CEO compensation has grown 940% since 1978, and your typical worker, their pay has only risen 12% during that time. There's a, a disconnect between productivity and wages. People have been incredibly productive for decades, and their wages have barely budged. Three men, three billionaires, own as much as the bottom half of Americans. The richest 5% of Americans own 66% of the nation's wealth. There was that Oxfam report from a few years back. 85 people, the richest 85 people, own more wealth than the bottom half of the world combined. 85 people with more than 3.5 billion people. I mean, and then the new numbers as a result of COVID, 26 million Americans are going hungry. That's three to four times more than the pre-pandemic pre number. And 40% of Americans are now food insecure, which is why you see these incredibly long lines at food banks. Incredibly long lines. So you look at a situation like that, and then they casually are like, billionaires have added a trillion dollars to their net worth since th for this year, since the beginning of COVID. And it's like, you don't see the issue there. You don't see that 40% of people being food insecure is not okay as billionaires have a trillion dollars more wealth. You don't see the problem there. You don't think anything can be done to address that. It's like they, this is basic governance would fix that. Redistributive policies, higher marginal tax rates, a wealth tax, you know, doing things like taking the necessities off the table like most other developed countries do, like healthcare and education. Having like a UBI, more stimulus checks. This stuff is all so important. But they act like it's awesome that billionaires are a trillion dollars wealthier and they're just ignoring the fact that now 40% of the country is food insecure. You're having an extreme consolidation of wealth among the hands of few people right now. Just so everybody understands. This is part of what's happened with COVID and with the CARES Act. It was a giant redistribution of wealth to the richest people in the country, to corporations, to billionaires. $5 trillion worth of a bailout, corporate welfare, corporate socialism, and people just got crumbs. I mean, it's just everything about this clip is infuriating. We don't live in a meritocracy. So you bring up these rags to riches story, that's not like the way the system works. Those people are lucky. If they're honest, they'll tell you they're lucky. And just so you know, up to 45% of wealth is inherited rather than self-made. Think about that. So we're talking about basically half of wealthy people. They didn't get it through like hard work or working their way up. Even in theory, it was just like daddy was rich and daddy died and you got what daddy had. This is another reason, by the way, why, you know, um... The death tax, also known as the inheritance tax, is super important. It only it only applies to like 0.1% of the country or something like that. It's people that have like estates, the estate tax. Like, yes, of course you should tax that. Who better to tax than rich dead people? You just want to hand it all off to the next generation? If somebody's worth $5 billion, kid doesn't have to do anything, say anything, be productive in any way, shape, or form, and just hand them $5 billion? Really? That's a, In a country where 40% of the people are food insecure? That's what you want to do? I mean, that makes no sense. It's just a stupid system. It's a stupid system. So, don't fall for the idea that we live in a meritocracy. These people all think we do. And they're slamming Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders wants to take the rough edges off of the insane system. Wants to bring about social democracy where at least you give people an equal chance of making it. But that's CNBC for you. That's CNBC. CNBC are the people who are going to be so happy that there's more billionaires, more millionaires, trillion dollars worth of wealth it was added to, the, to billionaires, and they're celebrating that as they ignore the economic degradation and extreme poverty in this country right now. And even if they were to acknowledge it and mention it, they wouldn't say that there's any connection whatsoever to how the wealthy are doing, which is either dishonest or really stupid.